Right, so, a small update. I've got some uh, new toys, a wireless tool height setter. And to be fair, bolt for them here. Now I will be absolutely honest, I can't remember if I had this and I've lost it or if it was uh, missing from the kit in the first place. But, they do say it's awful easy to have good customer service when you're selling stuff. But I find that a good test of companies is when you have an issue for whatever reason and how they deal with it. And I can't fault them on any question I've had with the guys at CNC for you or a chat with Brian or Kevin or whoever. They're always good, you know, there's absolutely no problems whatsoever. You don't get a fight with them, you know, obviously you don't want the phone to start jumping up and down and shouting at them. But um, cause some people seem to think that that's the answer to a, a problem. But uh, no, I, I, I found it to be very pleasant. Uh, there's no issues, you just explain what you need to know or what the issue is and it's sorted so there you go so I spoke to Brian yesterday explained that I either couldn't find it or it wasn't in it or whatever and uh, got a new bolt for today so I'm going to put this on here just now and this will be the z-axis uh, lead screw installation largely done I'm not doing the servo mounts yet uh, I wish I'm not doing the steppers until next week probably when I've done the other two axes and I can do them all at once. I don't want to have stuff floating around that can get knocked. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this back out and I'm going to let you see the just make sure that's snugged up. And I'm also going to let you see the block that I uh, had left when I'd done this. So uh, let me think about this now. Yeah, just uh, wind it this way a wee bit. It's not impossible to be able to reach down inside here and just put the screw in. But no, on my luck, <laughs> I'll end up dropping the screw down the bottom. So we're not doing that. So I'm just going to pop this out and lift it out because that's how hard that is. It's not very hard at all in other words. And I'm going to pop this on here. I'm going to just pop that bolt in there. Let's put that in a place where it's not going to roll off. Okay. So this just goes in here. Like so. And that's that. So I'm going to pause the video a second because I want to take a photograph of what's in there for Brian and the guys being as I've got mine apart. Okay, so there we go. So just to let you see, this is a tensioner that this bolt is pushing into and it connects to the top of the block that's in the column. Be an idea that you guys see that as well. Eh? So it's just that block there that you can see there and what happens is the bolt just pushes on that and tensions the the nut that the um ball screw is using to push the head up and down just pop this back on the tripod so yes phone again sorry guys so that's this done now, pretty much. I'm going to pop this back in very carefully. There's not a lot of space there, it's got just the right length on that, and just unfortunately that mine was the uh, long one, as they say. Actual fact, what I'm going to do is I think I'll sneak that up against that while I've got some control on the thing. So what size is that I wonder? That's got to be a five, is it? Yeah. So that's a five mil 
Allen key, millimeter Allen key for the head of that bolt or not. Right, I'm just going to wipe my hands off because there's some tier 2 on the ball screw. So what I don't want to do is drop my Allen key down here. So All I'm doing is just nipping this up against the making sure that's pushed in and I'm nipping this up against the top of that block just to provide some tension and stop it from bobbing around too much now I'll pop this in that feels better already you know good so like I say having a chat with Brian earlier today about you know what people do with their machines and stuff and as I think I've mentioned I plan on making some parts for 3d printers amongst other things so it's not anything that's particularly challenging in that regard so with a view to that and the level of accuracy I want from the machine I've got a machine that's going to do what I want it to do it doesn't need to machine down to point no no one the bonus of a dead but I suspect it won't but what I do want is a nice finish and a reasonably accurate part to the tolerances that I need so I believe this is going to give me that you need to spend someone in the region if you're buying a, a custom built machine uh, like an aluminium mill or something like that you're probably going to be in the region of about £12,000 or thereabouts for something like that it's a lot of money you know you can buy a Haas or a Sile or a Tormac for around about the same money but the minute you start adding options onto these machines they all cost a fortune and at this stage for a hobby that is also potentially a business it's not what I want to do I do like John Saunders ethos of you know don't have debt so this is taking a little bit of time because I've not borrowed money to do it um, and that's fine and the worst case scenario for me is this is a few thousand pounds I've invested in something that's going to be a hobby I'm hoping to be able to build parts for people but again it's not about mass production, you know, it's about making parts that people uh, will find useful. Right, let's see how this goes. What a difference. And there's, you can't feel any backlash in that. So let's just, I do like the fact that I can see the top of that nut in there. Excellent, there we go. There's a very slight amount of flex in that, if I'm being really picky. One of the things I might do for myself is I might machine that entire bearing block holder out of one piece. That's about the only thing I can think of that you would do to this that would make a difference. And again, time, money. So the level of expectation and price I'm well happy I think this is going to do well let's pop that back up there just now so it's out of the way I'm laughing here I can see what's going to happen I've lifted the head right up so that when I work on the X and Y axis ball screws I've got a bit of clearance what that probably means I'm going to scum the head off the place holder in the chuck <laughs> in the spindle so I can see it happening so right so to finish off installation of this really easy no real dramas the only thing is depending on your machine you may or may not have the clearance with the nut that comes with the acne screw if you do great four bolts take the z-axis handle off pretty much pull it back lift it out jobs are good and drop the new one in all right if however like me 
you didn't quite have the space then you're going to have to rotate the head I, honestly once you've done it once it's not hard you have to be mindful of the weight obviously when you turn it over but it's not ridiculous um you can it, it, it will go quite well you pull the pen and tip it and, and it goes nicely uh so nothing that you can't really manage with one person the power controller needs turned obviously to stay out the way but other than that you're fine uh, so insofar as it goes I think he's going to update the instructions on the website with this so that you can um, see what I did uh, I've sent him some photographs of the machine um, so people will have uh, a good idea of what the requirement is in order to get the the two bolts that hold the the, the block that's connected to the z-axis saddle uh, but other than that to be fair it's good the main thing is I didn't have to take the head off and even if I had this is a, a, a budget machine, it's an upper end budget machine to be fair, but it's still a hobby machine. It's not an industrial quality milling machine um, and I didn't pay the price for that. So at the end of the day, the kit's fine, does what it says in the tin. The mill might have variances between one and the others. So again, if that's the case, you work around it. But I'm quite happy with that. So that seems to be okay. Uh, once I get the stepper on it, I'll be able to run it up and down a few times and uh, just check. This isn't in the fine position either. The other thing I noticed that's worth remembering, and this was a good point actually, the bearings are a little bit more expensive than just insert um, bearings that go into the blocks on some people's uh, kits. And there's two bushes if you like. One goes underneath this block and the other goes on top and then the nut goes on. What I did like is it's a quality nut there's a couple of grub screws either side and on the inside surface of the bit that contacts the threads where the grub screws grip there's some brass inserts so you don't damage the threads on the ball screws when you tighten these up which is really good um, so yeah there you go um, well happy with the uh, installation of that that's a, a, a job well done I'm going to do the X and Y axis next um, it may be next week before that comes up. I've got a couple of things work, would you believe? Uh, a couple of things on, um, and uh, yeah, so we'll take it from there. Thanks very much, guys.